This is an extremely paranormal Halloween edition of Time Suck. If you want hard, empirical, definitive scientific evidence for the existence of demonic shadow people, you're not going to find it here. You're not going to find it anywhere because it doesn't exist. And yet many, many people seem to believe in these creatures' existence. So for we skeptics, let's have some fun and do our best to suspend our disbelief of the unexplained, that which can't be empirically proven. Let's become a little childlike again. Believe in magic. Bad magic. Let's delve into the unsubstantiated world of mystery. A mystery that not one or two or a few people claim to believe, but one that many, many, many people profess to have individually encountered and experienced. Thousands, if not millions of us, are terrified of shadow people, some believing to have been directly attacked by these dark entities. Prior to the Amityville episode, I would have felt 100% certain in believing that there is just no such thing as shadow people. Merely a bunch of overactive imaginations combined with exposure to superstition, false memory syndrome in full effect. But now, thanks to some interesting concepts thrown around by people much smarter than I, people like English theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking, and thanks to a renewed sense of, well, maybe not everything in this world can be studied and defined, owed to the incredibly troubling circumstances of the Amityville DeFeo family murders, who knows? Maybe these monsters are real. Maybe sometimes, alone in the dark, we should be afraid. Today, we're going to examine psychological and medical studies that will provide a rational explanation of the shadow people for some. Maybe the results of these studies will be enough to reaffirm what you already believed, that there is no paranormal basis for shadow people. Or if you do believe in shadow people, but don't understand what they are, maybe these results will give you some comfort, set your mind at ease. But then again, maybe not. In honor of Halloween, we're going to suck deep and hard on some paranormal possibilities that are pretty damn unnerving. You might not be afraid of shadow people at all heading into this suck, and you might come out on the other side with some brand new nightmare fodder. So you're welcome for that. This one might scare the absolute shit out of you. I hope it does. It's fun to be scared, right? Especially this time of year. At least it's fun until the shadow people show up in the corner of your room. Fun until they're standing at the foot of your bed when your eyes pop open at 3 a.m. Fun until you just can't shake the sense of something watching you. Something watching you from the darkness. Something with terrible intentions. Something that does mean you harm. Something not of this world that just might be able to inflict unimaginable horror upon you. So get ready for some chills. Get ready to feel some primal and prehistoric fear on today's dark, demonic, shadow people edition of Time Suck. You're listening to Time Suck. Welcome to Time Suck, Time Suckers. I'm Dan Cummins, and you just stepped into the clubhouse for the cult of the curious, welcome, future space lizards. Hail Nimrod, praise Bojangles, be gone, Lucifina, and well wishes to both Michael motherfucking McDonald and James Ingram. Can't forget sweet, soulful Jimmy. And I uh, apologize for my voice today. I, I kind of lost it a little bit last night, uh, uh, trying to freak out my dog of all things. And uh, that, plus a little bit of maybe a cold or something. Uh, I just can't shake this sound uh, that's in my <laughs> the way my voice sounds right now. I've done everything I can uh, today to try and to try and get it a little bit more powerful. And this is all I got. Maybe it fits. Maybe it's a, a creepy voice for a creepy episode. Uh, today's time suck is brought to you by the fantastic podcast Hello from the Magic Tavern. Hello from the Magic Tavern is a fully improvised comedy chat show set in a super fun magical world, sort of like Narnia or Middle Earth. Uh, host Arnie and I camp. He fell through a dimensional portal. Uh, behind a Chicago Burger King into the magical land of Foon. And instead of going off on adventures, uh, he decided to start a podcast, interviewing adventures, monsters, talking plants, uh, with the help of his co-host, a wizard and a talking badger. And it's so good. It's so fun. So creative. Uh, Chicago is the motherland of comedic improv, and Arnie and the gang do their city's legacy very proud. Uh, you really get invested in Foon after just one episode. I know I did. Uh, the show is very, very bingeable. So be careful. Uh, they have really fun guest performers as well. Uh, past notable guests include Felicia Day as a wizard. Uh, wait, wait, don't tell me. Peter Sagal as a unicorn. Paul F. Tompkins as a <laughs> satyr. Uh, uh, wrestler Colt Cabana as a half man, half bear, and many more. Uh, they just had Gilbert Gottfried uh, as a cockroach clown. Again, it's, it's absurd. It's fun. Uh, very, just very funny. Uh, and, if, and if you like to binge listen, you can start, you know, with uh, episode one, follow the full arc of the story, but you can also jump in uh, the most recent, recent episode and just try it out. You know, you'll, you'll miss a few callbacks, but overall you're going to get it. it. It's like time sucked that way. You know, just like new listeners are uh, at first a little confused by Nimrod. Just who the hell is Nimrod? Why does he keep talking about Bojangles? What's going on with all the Michael McDonald talk? 
Same thing with Hello from the Magic Tavern. I jumped in well after the first episode, and uh, I didn't feel lost at all. I I love it. It's exceptionally creative, clever, fun. So subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or check out hellofromthemagictavern.com. It's like Cheers set on uh, Middle Earth, or Always Sunny set in Narnia. You're going to love it, so enjoy. This Halloween week time suck is also brought to you by the World of Warships. Ever wonder what it might be like to captain some of the greatest warships of World War II? Then you should check out World of Warships, the free-to-play historical online combat game from Wargaming. Download World of Warships for free today at commandwarships.com, begin your naval adventure, and enter the code TIMESUCK17, all caps, and that's T-I-M-E-S-U-C-K-1-7. It's the number 17. Yeah, all caps. It is case sensitive. So uh, do that when you download your free game to get a ton of bonus content courtesy of this podcast. A little something extra for the time suckers. Uh, with our download, you get a free premium ship, the famous cruiser Aurora, a pile of in-game currency to jumpstart your epic World War II naval experience. So download World of Warships today at commandwarships.com and start playing. Thanks once again for all the reviews, man. Uh, uh, just welcome uh, to uh, this podcast. Uh, just like to extend welcome to all the Astonishing Legends podcast listeners. I know a lot of those came over this past week, and uh, thank you guys for the great feedback, and I, and I hope you're still enjoying Time Suck. Right around 1,500 reviews on iTunes now, so the bonus episode just keep rolling out, uh, which is very exciting. Makes me very very happy, very grateful that you guys care that much. Speaking of bonus episodes, this Friday we are sucking on the Zodiac Killer. Uh, This topic won the Instagram bonus vote landslide victory last week, uh, beating the disappearance of D.B. Cooper and gun control, the other two possible topics, by over 200 votes. If you don't like that, follow the suck on Instagram, at Time Suck Podcast. Get out there and vote next time. Over 1,500 iTunes reviews now, or right around again, 1,500 iTunes reviews, probably is by the time you're listening to this, over over 1,500. So we have at least three more bonus sucks coming every three weeks after the Zodiac. So keep rating the suck, and the bonus episodes uh, will keep rolling out, and we'll get your topic eventually. And thanks, for all, and thanks for all the sea chicken emails. Let me know that I actually got you to hop on Google and look into the existence of amphibious hens and roosters laying eggs off the South Florida coast uh, this past week. Every single email and social post I've gotten it just made me really, really smile. Um, more tour, tour dates coming up. Please come out and see me. Uh, the more people that come out to shows, the more touring I can do. Uh, and then I'll be able to do in 2018. That's how it works, man. You show up, the club makes money. I get to keep touring. No one shows up. The club doesn't book me back. And even worse, my agent won't be interested in booking me into new clubs. Uh, but luckily attendance has been picking up. So let's keep that going, man. Tell your friends. I need that grassroots support. I'll be at the Dayton, Ohio, funny bone, November 2nd through the 5th, Spokane comedy club, Spokane, Washington, November 9th through the 11th, Dr. Grins in Grand Rapids, Michigan, November 30th through December 2nd. St. Louis uh, Funny Bone in St. Louis, Missouri, December 7th through the 10. Comedy Club in, uh, on State in Madison, Wisconsin, December 14th through the 16th. Appleton, Wisconsin, just added on the, on the 13th of December, right before Madison. One Night Only, Skyline Comedy Club, Appleton, Wisconsin. Rounding out the year at Comedy Works in Denver, Colorado, December 28th through New Year's Eve. Come to those shows, man. Come support me. Have fun. Uh, enjoy a good night out with some, with some live stand-up. And right now, enjoy the suck on the shadow people. All right. So what is a shadow person? Uh, the best definition I can find comes from pararational.com an admittedly non academic website, very non academic, uh, on the homepage, the primary categories of information offered are Bigfoot, uh, black eyed kids, cryptids, UFOs, and other. So, you know, there you go. And under the category of other, uh, then under the, uh, the subcategory of entities is a post titled uh, Types of Shadow People, what they are and what they want. And, I, and, I, and here's a little bit of information from that post. Uh, the post begins with a good bit of confusion exists over just what a shadow person is and how to define them. It is obvious that there are several types of shadow people, all with different sources and motives. It's obvious, guys. Lots of different shadow people, lots of different motives. Wake up. Okay, wake up about their motives. Some of them want to kill you in your sleep, all right? That's a given. However, some just want to sell you some term life insurance, right? Some, some, want, to give you, some want to give you a foot rub, that's all. That's their only motive, to spread relaxation through a firm understanding of ancient Chinese reflexology. And they know that a lot of people get weird about little shadow creatures sneaking up on them in the middle of the night and rubbing their feet. And that's, and that's why they're so quiet, 
That's why they have to be so sneaky and creepy. God, if you, if you only understood their motives. And then he goes on. Shadow people uh, are a pariah to our darkest fears. Anyone can imagine waking in the middle of the night. I'm not sure if pariah works in that example. Whatever. I don't know. Maybe it does. Anyway, <laughs> anyone can imagine waking uh, in the middle of the night only to see in their sleepy haze a shape standing in the dark doorway to their room. A shape that is darker than the surrounding night, a shape that seems malevolent, standing and watching you as you sleep. You can imagine the thoughts that would go through your head. What is it? Where did it come from? What does it want? How long has it been there? Okay. Uh, full disclosure, I have thought weird shadowy things were watching me in the dark at night and always assumed it was my mind playing tricks on me. Hopefully, I still think that by the end of this suck. So I have thought in the past that I've seen weird little shadow kind of creature-like shapes. I just assumed I was really tired and I was hallucinating. Okay, so, okay, we'll continue. In this article, we will look at some basic information that is common to all shadow people and then break things down into some possible classes of shadow people that people may encounter. Basic definition of shadow people. Uh, before we delve into the types of shadow people, we should go over the commonalities of the entities that fall under the category of shadow people. Some common features of shadow people are, one, a shape that is generally male in appearance. Why does that have to be a dude? What can it be a sweet, curvy lady? Shadow, you know, creeping up and creeping up to your bed in the middle of the night. Why can't it be some sort of Jane, Jane Mansfield? Betty Page, you know, so that kind of shape. Some, some Lucifina vixen. No, it's got uh, to be the school janitor instead. It's got to be the goth kid, trench coat, and greasy hair. Yeah. Number two, they are aware of us and react to our observing them. Number three. The typical shadow person is tall, ranging from about six foot to seven foot. I'm not sure about that one. I know we're talking about something that may not even be a real thing, so it might seem ridiculous uh, to nitpick the supposed physical height attribute of a mythical creature, but a lot of other sources I looked into regarding shadow creatures describe them as tending to be shorter than the average person, more like four feet tall, right? Maybe that's a different kind of shadow person. And again, I know how dork it is to even bother adding this note, but I feel compelled to do so. Don't, don't want to rile up any shadow people purists out there. Just, you know, whoa, whoa, hey, whoa, seven foot tall shadow person. Okay, buddy. Okay, okay. guess you just lost a lister. Seven foot tall shadow person? Uh-huh. What are you going to talk about next? Two foot tall Sasquatch? Ten foot tall Chupacabra? A six inch high sea chicken? How am I supposed to take you seriously if you don't know the height of mythical creatures? So who knows? Maybe they're big, maybe they're little, maybe they're average size. Number four, very often shadow people seem to be wrapped in a cloak or a large old-fashioned cloak. Hats are not uncommon. I love these details. God, I, I hope if I see a real shadow person, it's wearing a hat, an old-fashioned cloak, because that would make it a little less scary to me. Like, if I woke up to a dark, ominous, humanoid, shadowy shape at the foot of my bed, I'd be fucking terrified. Terrified. You know? Like, if it's right there in the room, oh, Jesus Christ. But then, if I notice it's wearing an old-fashioned cloak... A little bit less scared, you know, just like, dude, who wears a cloak? What are you, are you a demon? Or are you just a weird drama club nerd who wandered into my house? Are you a demon or are you a lurky goth kid? Which, which is it? Which is it? But I'd still be pretty scared. But then if I was wearing a hat on top of the cloak, I feel like I'd be a little, a little bit more less scared, right? Like even, even more less scared. Like what kind of monster wears a hat? How, how evil can this little guy be? He's rocking a fedora. He's not a shadow person. He's, he's just a dark Sleepy hip, hipster looking for a place to crash tonight. Okay? He just had a little bit, a little too many, a few too many micro brews. That's all. A few too many PBR tall boys. That's all he had. Actually, uh, hat wearing shadow people could be pretty evil, as it turns out. Uh, we're going to talk about the hat man slash top hat demon shadow person at the end of this suck, and he does not fuck around. Very scary critter, as it turns out, hat or not. Okay, more details. Their appearance has depth to it. Unlike a shadow cast on a wall that is flat. Well, no, that's scary. I don't like that at all. A dark shadow that seems to hold physical weight and depth? No, thank you. Do not care for that. Number six. Quite typically, they have no visible eyes, but some will have glowing red eyes. No eyes or red eyes. Shit. Those are terrible eye options. Those are terrible choices. No eyes where I should be. That's very scary. Red eyes? Even scarier, I think. Neither option is good. That's like choosing between being killed by being burned alive or being killed by being boiled alive. Just can I, can I please have another option? These two are equally and completely horrific. Number seven, shadow people are rarely reported to have spoken or tried to communicate. Don't like that either. I, I'd rather have them just be quiet. 
Like, always be quiet. Because I doubt they're going to say anything to make themselves less creepy. Right? I wish they would have said shadow people have never been, you know, no one has ever claimed to hear a shadow person speak or communicate. That'd be way better. Because if it's going to talk, it's going to say something fucking horrible. Something monstrous. It's not going to open its scary mouth and just be like, um, excuse me, I, I hate to bother you, but uh, do you know where I can find a good late night meal? Something not fried or, or whipped up by a short order cook on a, on a greasy grill. Look, I, I, I know Denny's and IHOP are open 24 hours a day. And, and of course, there's Taco Bell and Jack in the Box down the street. But I'd rather hit up a healthier option if, if you know of something nearby. A 24-hour deli, uh, that would be ideal. Uh, even a local diner. Or maybe these fresh ingredients. Maybe like a farm-to-table situation. Somewhere I could get a nice matzo ball soup. Uh, perhaps a turkey chili. Again, I am sorry to startle you. Uh, if I could hold on to physical things uh, or, or have money... Uh, I'd have a smartphone and just GPS it like any other asshole, but alas, they don't make iPhones for shadow people. So, or hat, uh, to try and take the terrifying down a notch, but unfortunately, uh, there's nothing I can do about the glowing red eyes. Uh, very aware. Uh, they appear quite threatening, off-putting. Uh, I've tried everything, Visine, Benadryl. I don't know. I, I'm going to take off now. Y- you still seem a little too scared to speak, so I, I, uh, I'll show myself out. Sorry, guys. Uh, that shadow person was a talker. Chatty, chatty shadow person. That's a chatty shadow. Number eight, physical objects uh, seem to uh, not matter to shadow people, and they can walk through walls. Number nine, uh, can have a demonic shape and demeanor. What the hell is demonic shape? Horns? Slits for eyes? Spiky tail? What's a demonic demeanor? Aggressive? Antagonistic? Trixie? I'm sure it's not good. Uh, And then there are the different basic types of shadow people, such as number one, the lurker. Uh, lurking shadow people described as those generally found in homes and very often around bedrooms. The classic people, uh, shadow or sorry, the classic shadow people tend to be lurking. They will stand in doorways or corners and just watch their victims. These, these ones, these guys sound more like shadow perverts than shadow people. Maybe, maybe shadow, shadow voyeurs, maybe sh- shadow jerkers, you know, maybe it's shadow Andre Chikatilos. Do not mind me. Do not mind me. I am I am just Shadow Perv. I angrily jerk in soft, useless Ukrainian dick in corner. Do not be scared. I'm much scarier in real life than now. This is nothing compared to what I used to do. Well, apparently these guys seem to, to flee once noticed. So that's good. If you're going to see a Shadow person, this is the kind you want to see. Uh, number two, the visitors. There also seems to be a class of Shadow people that are less interested in what uh, we are doing but have their own agenda. Like they, they seem typically, uh, or excuse me, they are seen, tip- seen typically going from one place to another and seem not particularly interested in the goings-ons of those that observe them. Uh, these sounds like uh, even better ones to run into, you know? They're just, they're just passing through, man. Just don't, don't mind me. I don't, I, don't, I don't have time to hunt anyone. Are you kidding me? Are you shitting me? I got a lot on my plate. I have an appointment with the Banshee, 215. Uh, I got a meeting with the, uh, what are we going to do about the current lycanthrope problem in the dark forest next to the village committee, 330. Ah, man, if, if I, I wish, I wish, I, dr- I dream of having time to haunt people. Now that I, I gotta be in my way. I gotta get out of here. Number three, omens. Uh, some shining sightings of shadow people appear to be uh, omens or portents of something bad happening. These entities are generally associated with just one person and are more of a transitory occurrence stopping after the event or, or tragedy has taken place. Uh, number four, haunting shadows. The last main class of shadow people are those tied to a location and seem to haunt only one area. In general, though, uh, those that haunt a location tend to be more malevolent and dangerous to encounter. Fuck, great. Uh, they are, are less likely to flee when spotted and may actually choose to attack instead. Uh, so, you know, uh, if you notice, like, a shadow buddy is very into a part of your house, if, you know, you, you may want to remodel around that part of the house. You know, just, honey, bad news. We can't, uh, we can't use the kitchen anymore. We, we can't walk into the kitchen. We can't even look at the kitchen anymore. Nope, we, uh, we either, we either got to buy a new house or we live on takeout and paper plates and bottled beverages. Well, there is a shadow person who is very attached to the area around the sink. Hey, oh, hey, get him out. Of, you're welcome to try and kick him out yourself. Uh, but before you go do that, you probably will know he did just choke out uh, one of our kids. Jamal is gone forever. Yeah, yep, Jamal's gone now. I know, I know Gabby's gone last week. After Gabby last week and Jamal this week, you know, we're down too. We're down two kids. We got we got two left. So, you know, this problem is starting to become serious. You know, we may want to avoid the kitchen. Uh, finally, whoever is running it, uh, running Pararational.com thought it was important to add how shadow people behavior seems to be related to shadow people shape. There's, uh, there's human-shaped 
Human-shaped shadow people seem to be make up the bulk of the shadow people sightings and include the typical cloaked figure and shadow people wearing hats. These come in a variety of combinations. Obviously, what these shadow people are is pure speculation at this point in time. The persistent shadow people of the lurking variety don't generally seem to be purely evil in intent and almost seem more interested in us or at least feeding off our energy. Others are simply negative manifestations of spirits. Almost universally, though, they're, they're a sign of something negative. I like almost universally negative. It sounds like there's a chance that there's a handful of shadow sweeties out there. You know, just really, really friendly shadows. Just, baby, baby, would you look at that? That shadow guy is, well, oh, golly. He just baked us some chocolate chip cookies with walnut chunks. Man, those smell good. And uh, oh, now, now he's signaling us for us to come get them while they're hot. Oh my, oh my God, no. No, he did that. Did he just pour us some hot cocoa topped off with homemade whipped cream? Oh, my whipped cream is in the heart of a, in the shape of a heart. Would you look at that? Oh, yours is a white rose. Aw, thanks, Shadow Sweetie. I doubt, I doubt that's uh, a thing. Uh, and then there is a black mass shadow people. These do not sound sweet at all. Less human in form, the black mass shadow people. Uh, still of the general size, uh, the black mass type of shadow people give the impression of being a human figure, but more fuzzy or blurred. They can change in shape, uh, forming more of a cloud, but the impression is always that an entity is there. Uh, it's my assertion that many of these black mass shadow people are former negative spirits that have begun growing in power and are losing their human identity. Fuck. That doesn't sound fun. What, what identity are they forming as they move away from human? Monster in the closet identity? Monster under the bed identity? As they absorb more and more negative emotion, their sense of being human and who they are fades and becomes distorted. In the end, they become a great, they become a form of the following type of shadow people. Demonic. Great. They're demons in training. They are most, most certainly not sweet at all. And then there's uh, the demonic shadow people with the red eyes. Definitely the most dangerous of the types of shadow people. Demonic shadows should be avoided at all costs. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd assume so. Uh, never heard a story about a friendly, well-intentioned demon, you know. Uh, among shadow people, these uh, are one of the few types that you can sometimes see the eyes of. Many accounts of them talk of glowing red eyes, which is a particularly bad sign. Okay, well, now I know that I would rather see uh, no eyes than red eyes. Man, uh, still joking, but a little, little creeped out. I, I am, I am uh, doing all of this in the dark, by the way. I decided to add to the intensity of this recording. I'm by myself <laughs> at my desk that faces the corner. To, to, the, to my left, uh, so in the periphery of my, my vision is this like little dark hallway, like bl very dark hallway, laundry kind of hallway uh, that doesn't, it's like a dead end. And then darkness behind me that goes back towards like uh, where my bedroom is and stuff. So, ah, it is, it is, I, I, I did it intentionally to, to, add, to add to this so I get some real fear going. But even though I, I, I knew I was going to do that, now that I'm in the middle of it, there definitely are these feelings of like, ah, I wish I kind of wouldn't have done that. I wish I, ah, I don't like not being able to look to my left. Because if I see anything, I'm going to lose my shit. Okay. Uh, and I don't like having my back to the rest of the house where anything could walk. Okay, I got to stop talking about this. Uh, just focus on the, focus on the, what I'm talking about. Focus on shadow people in other places, not shadow people behind me. All right, let's get back into demons. There, yeah, that'll make me feel better. God dang it. Okay, so demonic forms vary wi widely, uh, but usually retain a humanoid shape, but are often exaggerated in height, have wings or horns or elongated fingers. That's fucking creepy. Uh, they do not give the impression of being a normal ghost or sentient entity. Uh, luckily, these demonic shadow people are typically tied to one location, so I guess that's good. Uh, unless the location is your bedroom and you can't afford to move. That's very bad. That's very unfortunate. Finally, there's the uh, kind of like miscellaneous category of shadow people. There are, uh, it says there are yet more forms that fall into the shadow people categories. One that is m more common is the old hag shadow person. What is the old hag shadow person? Well, I found a thoughtco.com article that explains it. It says, uh, about a year and a half ago, I was woken in the night by a strong, warm breeze. I could not move and could not scream. It lasted about 30 seconds and was gone. I saw nothing. Last week, it happened again. I was lying in bed and again was awoken. I felt a strong force holding me down. I could not sit up. I tried to scream out for my daughter and could not get any noise to come out. I tried to hit the wall with my arm and this force would not let me. It again lasted about 30 seconds and was over. I really don't believe in ghosts and didn't see anything at all. I am just really scared and confused. Have you ever had a similar experience? The above incident is a classic example of what has become known as the old hag syndrome and is one of many such letters I receive from readers each month. And this is the Thought Co. author. The victims 
awake to find that they cannot move even though they can see, hear, feel, and smell. There is sometimes a feeling of a great weight on the chest and the sense that there is a sinister or evil presence in the room. And like the above reader, they are often quite frightened about what is happening to them. The name of the phenomenon comes from the superstitious belief that a witch or an old hag sits or rides the chest of the victims, rendering them immobile. The experience is so frightening because the victims, although paralyzed, seem to have full sense or full use of their senses. In fact, it is often accompanied by strange smells, the sound of approaching footsteps, apparitions of weird shadows, glowing eyes, and the oppressive weight on the chest, making breathing difficult, if not impossible. All of the body senses are telling the victims that something real and unusual is happening to them. The spell is broken and the victims recover, often on point of losing consciousness. Fully awakened well, they sit up, completely baffled by what just happened to them since now the room is entirely normal. The phenomenon occurs to both men and women of various ages and seems to happen to about 15% of the population at least once in a lifetime. It can occur while the victim is sleeping, during the day or night, and it is a worldwide phenomenon that has been documented since ancient times. In the 2nd century, the Greek physician Galen attributed it to indigestion, according to the Encyclopedia of Ghosts and Spirits by Rosemary Ellen Guiley. Some individuals suffer repeated attacks over a lifetime, or, or excuse me, some individuals suffer repeated attacks over a limited period of time. Others have repeated attacks for years. So that is the old hag shadow person. She sounds positively delightful. Just a nice old witch that sits on your chest and paralyzes you until, you know, until you're about, feel like you're about to die. And then she, you know, and then she leaves. Doesn't sound like she does anything, you know, really that, that bad. You know, some people prefer to sit in a recliner. Some people prefer to sit on the floor. Some people like a firm office chair. And the old hag prefers the chest of a stranger who is terrified and paralyzed. All right? It's just a preference. Uh, other less common reports are of shadow people that are non-human but seem more uh, alien than demonic in nature. And of course, there are also other shadow entities such as dogs. And of course, the most frightening of the shadow dogs is Shadow Bojangles. Three legs, all black shadowy pit bull shape, one red eye. This bizarre world Bojangles is the creation of Lucifina. Damn Lucifina and her shadow things. And Lucifina, that corset wearing vixen with some really cool leather thigh high, high heeled boots, uses Shadow Bojangles to slander the reputation of our beloved canine mascot and protector and prophet of Nimrod. Shadow Bojangles does what Bojangles would never do. Instead of protecting the poor, the oppressed, the free, Shadow Bojangles terrifies children in the middle of the night, especially orphans. Yeah, that's how sick he is. Particularly sickly orphans. The sicklier and the orphanier, the better for the vile Shadow Bojangles. If you've lost your parents and your grandparents and your stepparents and your foster parents and your friends' parents and your neighbor's parents at a young age, and you have walking pneumonia and a lot of dietary allergy problems like gluten intolerance and peanuts make you break out in hives and you have irritable bowel syndrome and one leg is longer than the other and you have a club foot and a shallow rib cage and hangnail and you have to rely on dirty crutch to get around and you live on moldy gluten-free bread and cold porridge and always, I mean always, have a considerable amount of dried snot on your upper lip that you don't even consider cleaning off. Well, then Shadow Bojangles never leaves your bed at night. Sorry, that went, that went on a bit long. And then the, uh, the parent uh, rational post wraps up with, in fact, there is likely a class of shadow people that are actually aliens, but simply present to us a shadowy form as they interact with us. Huh. All right. Well, there you go. You get, you get demons and ghosts and then you get some fucking aliens. All right. Before we get into the, where the term shadow people originated, let's hear from our third and final sponsor. Time Suck is brought to you today by Lisa an innovative, direct-to-consumer online mattress brand that is also socially conscious. You can give back while you sleep. Driven by the mission to provide a better place to sleep for everybody, for every 10 mattresses Lisa sells, they donate one to a shelter through their 110 program. And who, how cool is that? Uh, Lisa also plants one tree for every mattress sold, donates 1% of each employee's time to volunteer for local causes. Very cool. And, and, and none of that matters, though. If they're not extremely comfortable, they are. I now have a Lisa mattresses, <laughs> Lisa mattresses. I don't know why I had to plural. I have, I have a Lisa mattress. I don't have a pile of Lisa mattresses. That's, that's too much. That's too much, right? That's greedy. I gotta, I gotta you just spread them around. You guys have some too. Lisa's patented universal adaptive feel is designed for all types of sleepers. Features three premium foam layers, including a two inch Avena foam top layer for cooling and breathability, a two inch memory foam middle layer for body contouring and pressure relief, a six inch dense core support foam for durability and structure for sleepers of all sizes. And you can have all this delivered to your door in a surprisingly easy to handle box. Uh, Lisa will mail a mattress uh, to your door in the US, UK, Canada, Germany. I had mine mailed to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. 
uh, this past Thursday, and I couldn't believe how small the box was for the, how big the mattress was. Got a king mattress, opened it up. It was all rolled, uh, rolled up and vacuum sealed. I unrolled it, cut the wrapping off, took more than three minutes for all this. No awkward uh, mattress to lift through door frames. And then it just expanded to full king size, like a, like a fucking weird magic trick. Like it was this magical Chia Pet mattress. And then, with, and then it was super firm within like 15 minutes. And I have, to get a, I have to get a frame, figure out how to get rid of my old sleep number bed. Now, now because, you know, Lisa is my new sleep home. My kids have already slumber partied on it uh, the first night and the second night. <laughs> they, they got to use it. Uh, they thought it was so cool how it expanded out of the box. Uh, I could go on and on. Highly recommend Lisa if you need a new mattress or just want to upgrade your sleep. Very, very cool. Try Lisa mattress in your home. 100 nights risk-free with free shipping always. And you get $100 off when you go to lisa.com, L-E-E-S-A dot com slash time suck. 100 bucks off for time suckers. Yes, that is a substantial discount. That's L-E-E-S-A dot com slash time suck. Okay, so, so now we have uh, some understanding of what a shadow person is, uh, what they're supposed to be, you know, and we'll, and we'll get more firsthand accounts later that will really go into detail about someone's alleged experience with these things. But I, w- I was wondering, where did the term shadow people come from? Where, where does this term originate? Well, it's, it's hard to say uh, when the term originated because various cultures, have, you know, had mythologies regarding kind of shadow people since the very beginnings of human history. Uh, shadow people have been associated with demons, extraterrestrial beings, beings from a parallel dimension, ghosts, etc. for centuries. In the ancient Roman and Greek mythology, there's the shade. Uh, and the shade is the spirit or ghost of some deceased member of this world now residing in some underworld like Hades who can cross over into our world, sometimes appearing as a dark, shadow-like apparition. So there is, uh, so that's the, that's the shade going way back to the beginnings of, you know, recorded history. Uh, before we dig further into the historical or- origins... Uh, let's take a second to examine when shadow people first began to be widely talked about in modern culture. We do have an actual date for that. In modern culture, the popularity of so-called shadow people can be traced to April 12th, 2001, when Native American elder Thunderstrikes, a.k.a. Harley Swift Deer Reagan, appeared on an episode of Art Bell's late-night paranormal radio show, Coast to Coast AM, and then listeners were encouraged to submit drawings of shadow people they'd seen to the show's website. If you're not familiar with the uh, show Coast to Coast AM and our current podcast, smartphone, Bluetooth audio, satellite radio, Pandora, Spotify, on and on, uh, kind of media option world, uh, it was a great show to, to listen to when all you had uh, in, in the car was AM, FM radio, you know, CD player. And, uh, and especially if you were driving, you know, through the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night, if, if you didn't feel like listening to music or some book on CD or some sports talk show or religious programming, a lot of times the only other option was Art Bell, right? In the middle of the night, uh, a lot of times, uh, I found that Coast to Coast AM was sometimes the only radio station that would come in, period. And, and, and the show, you know, it would go on for hours, you know, throughout the night, and Art Bell would talk to various experts, you know, about all sorts of interesting fringe subjects, government conspiracies, UFO phenomena, cryptozoology, the paranormal, the occult. It, it was a precursor to Time Suck, but one that only dealt with uh, the fringiest of topics. Art Bell was a total believer, and he presented all this info in, in a very professional and well-produced show that gained a cult following. Uh, the show kicked off in 1984. Art would broadcast it out of Pahrump, Nevada, a little town of about 60 miles west of Las Vegas near Death Valley. And, and when Art started the show, it only had about 2,000 people in it. Uh, and, and that location totally added to its appeal. Here's a strange man talking about weird shit in the middle of the night, broadcasting it from his home studio in the middle of the Nevada desert. And sometimes he'd also have a uh, mainstream guest call in like George Carlin, uh, Dan Aykroyd, uh, Leonard Nimoy, X-Files creator, Chris Carter, Dean Koontz, <laughs> Willie Nelson randomly. Uh, it was great. Very unique and fun. And, and it maybe still is. It, it is still around AM stations all around the U S Canada, Guam, apparently Australia, elsewhere, but enough about the history of Coast to Coast. Just, I just wanted to establish that, that shadow people really became somewhat buzzworthy and spawned a subsequent internet mythology in 2001 due to being discussed on a popular paranormal show broadcast in roughly 600 markets worldwide. And, and here's a little sample arts shadow people episode. I don't even remember now. It was... Oh, it was at least a week, a week and a half ago, I had a caller who said, Art... I see shadow people. You know, like, I see dead people. I see shadow people. And that began a chain of events that's leading to the show that we're just now going to do. At nighttime, 
I remember sitting in bed and holding conversations with people inside my bedroom. They'd come to me, and sometimes while sitting on my bed, they'd talk to me. Now, as an adult, I would be skeptical of this story if I didn't actually have proof from my parents who heard the conversations. There seem to be things that you will see moving in your peripheral vision every now and then. I mean, it's just like, what the hell was that? It moved. And you look, and there's not, nothing there. Okay, so, that, so that's our show. Okay, now we now we know kind of where they were first uh, brought up, shadow people, as far as, you know, in, in modern hi- American culture. And, uh, and let's go back a little bit more h- history with them. The ancient Egyptians uh, also had their version of shadow people. We've already established the ancient Rome, uh, ancient Roman and, and Greek people with their shades. Now, the ancient Egyptians believed that the human soul was made up of essentially five parts. And one of these parts was the shadow. Essentially, they believed that your actual shadow contained a little piece of your total soul. Like a little portion of your soul exists in the shadow. And, and, and the shadow wasn't tied to your body in death. And it could leave. It could wander. In some Egyptian tombs, there's actually a special box believed to store uh, one's shadow. As, you know, the pharaohs had their little shadow boxes. And it was, uh, you know, th- their shadow that would venture into the underworld. So in theory, uh, you could see one of these shadows alone on its way to the afterlife. And perhaps, you know, on the way, some of these shadows got lost. We, we don't know much about what the everyday Egyptian believed about shadow people because there's so much we don't know about everyday ancient Egyptians. But they did have shadow people. Uh, there's shadow people in Native American mythology. Uh, they're part of, part of various Native American mythologies like the Choctaw. Uh, the Choctaw used to inhabit present-day Alabama, Florida, Mississippi, parts of Texas, and Louisiana. And the Choctaw believed that uh, every man had a Shilambish, the outside shadow, which always followed him, and the Shilip, the inside shadow or ghost, which after death goes to the land of ghosts. The Shilambish uh, was supposed to remain upon the earth and wander relentlessly about its former home, often moaning to frighten its surviving friends as to make them forsake the spot and seek another place to live. It was also supposed to assume the form of a fox or owl, and by barking like the, like one of those animals, screeching like one of those animals, it would cause great anxiety and dread, for the cry was considered ominous of bad things to come, and the Choctaws believed they could tell between the Shillimbush uh, and the animal it was uh, imitating. When a fox barks or an owl screeches, another fox or owl replies. But when the Shillimbush, Shillimbush uh, imitates the sound of either animal, no response is given. So that's the, the, the Choctaw belief in the, something that could be considered a shadow person. Uh, in African mythology, in ancient Africa, in Nigeria, the Yoruba people believe that a person has at least three spiritual beings, kind of like the Egyptians where they're, where they're fragmented, their soul is fragmented in different portions. Uh, there's the, the Imi, uh, meaning breath, is a vital force that keeps a man alive. It resides in the heart and lungs and is fed by the wind. There's the Ojiji, and that's a shadow that follows his owner and awaits his return in heaven when he dies, the third being the Elida, or spirit, uh, which must be fed by sacrifices. Uh, these spiritual beings flee the body at the time of death and all await his return in heaven. And I'm sure there were plenty of rumors about, you know, someone's Ojiji getting lost, not making it to heaven, maybe terrorizing some kids who don't go to bed on time or finish their chores or listen to their parents, you know? Did you, did you not bring water back from the well like you were supposed to, young Jakari? All right, well, if the Ojiji comes tonight and attacks you in your sleep, I guess, I guess you know why. I don't know why that was Russian. I, I was going to do no accent, and then halfway through, I decided to try and do an African accent, and then I couldn't think of something uh, that wouldn't possibly be horrifically offensive, and then I somehow <laughs> I tried to do some travel thing that came out Russian. It was, uh, it was Chil- Chikatilo is still stuck in my brain. He's, he wants to find, uh, he, he sometimes he wanders into Africa. Where does, does he jerks his soft penis? Oh, God. Okay, there was uh, medieval Europe. Uh, there was, you know, shadow people in various regions of medieval Europe. It was believed that shadow beings desired blood and couldn't be reborn without it. The shadow world and some sort of shadow people, whether it's the shadow demons of Christianity or the jinns of the ancient Arabian world, some form of shadow person exists in almost every ancient culture's folklore. Uh, actually, in early Arabian and Islamic mythology and theology, uh, the jinn uh, are considered uh, by some to be a type of shadow person. Uh, the jinn are supernatural creatures. According to the Quran and certain ancient records, the jinn were created from smokeless and scorching fire. According to Rosemary Guiley, author of The Jinn Connection, one of the many forms of the jinn is the shadow people. The jinn, according to Islam, are another life form, separate from humans, angels, and demons. And they exist essentially in a parallel universe alongside or on top of ours. They are living entities with supernatural powers and can through various ways that differ according to various mythologies interact with our world and with us. They can cross over, so to speak, and like us, some are good, some are bad, 
and some, when they appear in our world, they take a, a dark, shadowy form, and they can mess with us, do us harm, possess us, and there are shadow people, uh, like equivalent spirits and or creatures in ancient Hindu, you know, and, and Buddhist and Jewish folklore. Every culture has its bad guys. A lot of them are associated with the night, with the world of shadows, the evil absence of light. So why have humans seemingly always uh, believed in various sorts of, you know, nefarious evil shadow creatures? Well, for, uh, first, I think we should look at some science. You know, uh, there is the brain might be malfunctioning is one explanation for it. You know, your mind might truly be playing tricks on you according to, you know, for example, a 2006 study uh, done by neurologist Olaf Betblank. Uh, Olaf asked you to imagine the following scenario. You're walking down an empty street alone when suddenly you have the eerie feeling that someone's following you. Where does that feeling come from? According to Olaf and other researchers, it comes from a specific region of the brain called the tempo <sighs> temporoparietal motherfucker. That is a crazy word. I practiced it so many times before this recording, and then I actually even paused the recording to practice it some more, and then still got it wrong. It has, it's just, it's too much. Temporoparietal. Yeah. Uh, and when the TPJ uh, is stimulated, it can create the illusion of a shadow person. Given that such experiences are often heightened in psychic dis uh, psychotic disorders, such as schizophrenia and paranoia, and even in those who believe they've been abducted by aliens, Olaf believes that the results of this finding could lead to a better understanding of these neurological conditions. Uh, the finding emerged by accident when Olaf Blank uh, of the Brain Mind Institute in Lausanne, Switzerland, and his colleagues were attempting to identify the source of epileptic seizures in a 23-year-old woman. They applied a mild current through surgically implanted electrodes to various regions of her brain. Not much happened until the researchers stimulated the woman's left TPJ located roughly above the left ear. Suddenly, she reported feeling the presence of a mystery person behind her, a motionless and speechless shadow that imitated her body posture and actions. He lay beneath her when she lay down, sat behind her when she sat down, and attempted to take a test card from her when she tried to participate in a language exercise. Such delusions are similar to those seen in patients with schizophrenia, says Blank. Schizophrenics often mistake their own bodies to be someone else's, for example, and attribute their own actions to others. They also have frequent illusions of being followed or controlled by a stranger, as do those who claim to have been manipulated by aliens. Blank says the shadow person phenomena may shed light on how the brain perceives self. In order to recognize its own body, he says, the brain uses sensory information such as visual and uh, proprioceptive cues, which indicate the position of body parts relative to each other and everything else. And then the TPJ is known to put some of these cues together. When this function is disrupted, for whatever reason, the brain perceives two bodies instead of one and makes the second uh, that of a stranger, the researchers pr uh, proposed in their study. Man, uh, mind blown. Think about that for a moment. Our, our brains have to internally process our body as belonging to us, right? Because we, I guess, you know, that's something you just take for, you know, for granted. You don't, why would you think about that? It's like, well, yeah, of course it's my body. I, this is my body. It's, it belongs to me. I can touch it. I'm putting my hands on my legs right now and on my chest right now. This is me. But it's like your brain has to process that. It has to feel you, send a signal to you. You know, just be like, yep, this is us. It's like constantly, it's, it's like it's constantly running all these computer background codes, you know, to make sure every, that we're, we're taking in sensory information the proper way. There's all these things constantly running in the background. And sometimes these things could get messed up and something as crazy as that sounds, it's like your brain could stop being able to realize that you are you and it could see you as somebody else. That's fucking my, ah, makes my brain hurt to keep thinking about that. So yeah, fascinating stuff, fascinating stuff. For some reason, it just projects what should be you as this dark kind of carbon copy, a, a shadow person, if you will. And then there's the whole sleep paralysis association with shadow people. I, I've, I've kind of summarized and put it into layman's terms uh, some findings Stephanie De Silva uh, found for me in a study published earlier this year in the U.S. National Library of Medicine called Sleep Paralysis, The Ghostly Bedroom Intruder and Out-of-Body Experiences, The Role of Mirror Neurons, a study conducted by Balond uh, Jalal, a neuroscientist at Cambridge University who also worked at Harvard, and Villeneur uh, S. Ramachan Rama. Chandran, another neuroscientist and current professor in the Department of Psychology and the Graduate Program in Neurosciences at the University of California, San Diego. Uh, and by the way, as I'm doing these names, I think some people are like, Jesus Christ, why can't he pronounce you know, these names right? Why can't he pronounce all names right and all words right? 
I felt so much better. I got called in for jury duty. And those of you who are familiar with my stand-up, I'm sure you find that hilarious. Yep, I still get called in despite my jury duty meltdown experience. But I got called in and and the prosecutor, the prosecuting attorney had some, uh, I think you like Ukrainian type name or Serbian or something. Anyway, the judge who was like an esteemed local judge, uh, apparently, I found out, you know, and he was, he, uh, he seemed like a really cool dude. He could not pronounce her name. And he just uh, referred to her as like, let's say her first name was Sadie. He was like, uh, I-, I will just be referring to her as Miss Sadie because I cannot pronounce her name to save my life. So this is a guy, he's a judge, still can't pronounce certain fucking names. So there you go. Made me feel a lot better because Jesus Christ, man, it's one thing to read all this stuff. But when you're writing it all out, sometimes you just get these names. Like the one I just saw. If you're raised in India, the fuck, sure. Of course, you can be like, well, yeah, that's just da 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 Of course, it's familiar to you. If you're, you're raised, if you're raised in Idaho and then you see a name with fucking 75 consonants, you know, you're just like, ah, but I don't know. Okay. I, I'm enough of my rant. So anyway. Very two very intelligent people, two very very intelligent neuroscientists, uh, and this and the second guy, this Ramachandran, Ramachandran uh, current professor in the Department of Psychology and the graduate program in neurosciences at the University of California, San Diego. So some of you might even have him as a professor, and you can be like, his name actually is pronounced blah blah blah. All right, here's what they found: rapid eye movement (REM) sleep is referred to as paradoxical sleep. Our blood pressure. Uh, our heart rate, breathing become elevated, and EEG recordings show a peculiar lower voltage and mixed frequency pattern. The firing pattern of most neurons during REM sleep resembles those of wakefulness. And in some cases, neurons fire even in more intense bursts than when we are awake. Why are our neurons firing? Because we have our most vivid and emotionally charged dreams during REM sleep, often, in, often involving a complex story plot. You know, we don't know why we have those, but we, we know that we do have them. We have these complex dreams. In order for us not to act out these complex dreams and potentially hurt ourselves when we're fucking fighting bad guys, you know, or, or jumping off a building or whatever in our dreams, our brain leaves us temporarily paralyzed from head to toe, you know, to, to keep us from killing ourselves. This paralysis is triggered by the pons and the ventromedial medulla that suppress skeletal muscle tone during REM sleep. Occasionally, we start to wake up mentally while under the spell of REM paralysis. The result is a curious condition called sleep paralysis, where the person is left trapped, unable to move or speak upon falling asleep or upon awakening. Now, during sleep paralysis, the sensory system is clear and ocular and respiratory movements remain intact, culminating in a state of semi-consciousness coupled with body paralysis. While once thought to uh, only arise in the context of narcolepsy, a rare autoimmune sleep disorder affecting less than 1% of the population, we now know that 20%, one in five uh, members of the general population have sleep paralysis episodes. During SP, the vivid and sometimes terrifying dreams of REM sleep can spill over into emerging wakefulness. Hallucinations occur and include out-of-body experiences and sensing and seeing the presence of menacing intruders in one's bedroom. Well, Beland and Villeneuve uh, have proposed that a functional disturbance of the right parietal cortex may give rise to the common bedroom intruder hallucination during sleep paralysis. As described, the absence of afferent, uh, afferent sensory signals might cause this disturbance of body image, implicating regions such as the right superior parietal lobule and the temporoparietal junction, TPJ, and fucking nailed it that time, goddamn it. Critical for the construction of a neural representation of the body. There is a hallucinated projection of a genetically hardwired body map due to conflicting neural conduction. This hypothesis is broadly consistent with the finding that disrupting the TPJ using focal electrical stimulation can induce the feeling of an illusory, other, shadow-like person mimicking one's body postures and that hyperactivity in the temporal parietal cortex of schizophrenics can lead to the misattribution of their own actions to others. Wow. I know that was a lot of info. Uh, in a nutshell, what I took from that is the combination of sleep paralysis and some sort of disturbance to the TPJ, a few other portions of the, of the brain, would leave you paralyzed, prone to seeing REM dreamlike hallucinations and give you the feeling that a dark shadow figure is nearby and watching you, right? That like just some brain malfunction in a variety of ways, this interesting uh, phenomena of sleep paralysis where you're kind of awake, 
but not totally awake. You, you still have the REM kind of dream attributes going, but you also are semi-conscious. The convergence of all this stuff could lead to scientifically seeing the shadow person. Man, I, I love learning this kind of shit. So, you know, I think uh, if, if we're going to attribute shadow people to, to science, I think Scarface, you know, said it best with the Ghetto Boys back in 1991. I keep looking over my shoulder and peeping around corners. My mind is playing tricks on me. God, that's a good song. It holds up. It holds up. 1991. Still sounding legit. All right, so that was one possible scientific explanation for shadow people. Now let's look into another one, a weird uh, sciencey explanation, something touched on by a genius you, you've probably heard of, uh, Nimrod. Uh, regarding shadow people, Lord Nimrod says, Behold in of the dark, behold in it, behold in it, thou is darkest dark. Be scared in of it, be scared in and frightened in of, of it, thou darkest dark, dark shadow, dark and mean spirit thing of bobbin. And if thou hast ever hath thine encounter within shadowest shadow people, only one word can keep thou thingest safest, and that word is... And then unfortunately, Nimrod was struck with sleep paralysis. Uh, even Lord Nimrod must rest. And even he gets occasional sleep paralysis, and sadly, he, he didn't get to finish his thoughts. He's busy, and he's hard to understand, and he's crazy. Uh, he, had, he had other thoughts to get to. No. Let's look into the real genius I was moving towards. British theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking. Uh, Hawking and some of his colleagues, uh, they've toyed with a mind-boggling concept that involves the existence of various hidden dimensions of space, dark matter that exists underneath us, in a sense, uh, underneath our own world. Yeah, Stephen says, to think of our world as a brain world, like B-R-A-N-E, like as in membrane. And since about uh, 1994, him and some other colleagues have theorized this, uh, th this concept of curling up the extra dimensions of space into these brains. And if particles can be viewed as occupying points in space and strings are seen as lines, then brains are two-dimensional two or even higher-dimensional entities. In this concept, a two-brain entity is like a two-dimensional membrane. Hawking and his colleagues believe that the universe uh, may be one of these such brains and, and it, is, it is expanding like the surface of an inflated balloon, the quote is, the idea is that matter and light would be confined to the brain so we cannot travel through or see through the extra dimensions. So, I don't even, I'm going to be honest right here. I don't know the fuck he's talking about. I should have just read Chinese. <laughs> I should have just read you something in a different language right there because a lot of times I can read these things and kind of sum it up. Fucking, I got nothing. I got nothing. But uh, this brain theory apparently suggests that the universe can have uh, up to 26 different dimensions and that's all I wanted to get to, is that there's, he thinks there could be different dimensions. He thinks 95% uh, of the material of the universe is invisible. Uh, it's just made up of all this dark matter. And an interesting quote he has says, there could be shadow galaxies, shadow stars, and even shadow people. Science fiction characters like Doctor Who are always traveling through other dimensions, but now it seems that other dimensions may be more science fact than science fiction. We now have reason to believe that space-time may have more than three dimensions of space and one dimension of time that we experience. So, you know, even Stephen Hawking, man, believes in the possibility of shadow people, not demons or wraiths or some, you know, something else like paranormal in this view, but still creepy and disturbing on some level. You know, what if parallel beings and one of these parallel brains have figured out how to fuck with us? I don't, I don't like it. Uh, there are also various people uh, you can find on Reddit, random message boards who believe that shadow people are tied to astral projection. This belief that your spirit can, you know, leave your sleeping body and actually, you know, travel to basically anywhere. And some people believe that these sh shadows we see are the spirits of astral travelers. So somebody's... They're, I don't know, their body's asleep somewhere and they're out projecting and, and we see their projection, which comes across the shadow. All right, we're finished with the analytical portion of this suck. Now let's, let's dive into some darkness. Let's look at this, the wicked side of mystery. I'm going to share a few tales of what people believe happened to them and I encourage you to let your mind just kind of wonder, you know, what if they did see what they, what they thought they saw? And then, uh, good luck peacefully falling asleep tonight. Super Scottish. All right, time for some firsthand accounts of shadow people encounters, good old Halloween scary story stuff. Maybe they made them up, but what if they didn't? You know, these first two tales are from a website called shadowpeople.org. Story number one from Name Withheld by Request, subject My Shadow Account. I had an incident with the shadows when I was about 10 years old. I was sick with the flu and was staying at my mother's house. I had been watching TV in her bedroom and I fell asleep. Sleeping fitfully, I was awoken by the sound of my mother screaming ferociously. She was lying next to me, and it was now about 2 a.m., and she was sitting up and pointing at the wooden dresser. 
the silhouette of a man was perched on top of it, which was very high, and it was crouching there, its face fixed upon my shrieking mom. It had no detail. It was just a featureless humanoid shape with narrow white eyes. It turned its head to me when it found out I had awoken as well, and it just sort of stared at me while my mom continued to howl at it. It then leapt off the dresser, looked at me again, and then ran out the door where light from a hallway was streaming in. The way it ran, it just sort of became a blurry streak that vanished around the corner faster than any man could run. The next morning, my mom was so very nervous, and I brought up to the shadow. She started acting very skittish and told me not to talk about it ever again. I brought it up several more times in the future, and each time she admitted that she never wanted to think about it again. The interesting thing was she felt a great evil force emanating from the shadow. She told me that, mu- she told me that much, and that it was a spawn of the devil. However, I felt nothing more than curiosity from it and the fact that it was on my side of the bed and the way it was looking at me gave me the impression that it was there to watch me as it only fled when I noticed I, when it noticed I had glimpsed it. God, what if that actually happened? Can you imagine as a kid, not only seeing some shadowy demon thing, but then, uh, you know, uh, after being awoken by your screaming mother who also sees it, then you see this thing. I mean, holy shit. I mean, when you're 10 and you think you're, you know, you've seen some monster, your parents are the people who are supposed to tell you, oh, no, it's just your imagination, sweetie. They're not supposed to say, yeah, no, I know. I know you saw it. I saw it too. I was right there. Because now it's real. God, what do you just cry yourself to sleep for the rest of your childhood after that? Uh, you know, or do what this kid supposedly did and, and try and tell yourself that while you did see it, it's okay because it didn't try and hurt you. I guess that would be how you'd have to like, you know, rationalize it. Be like, yeah, 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 no, I saw it. But, uh, but it didn't hurt me, so, you know, no big whoops. Wow. Uh, well, then he goes on. This was not the least of my encounters. For years, both before and after the incident, I always noticed that there were times when it was dark, that there had seemed to be a presence lurking in the shadows, a force that made you feel like something was staring at you. At times, it was merely uncomfortable. But others, uh, God, I'm getting creeped out now. God dang it. I just looked over, I saw two glowing lights to my left. It's the fucking printer lights. Because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing this in utter darkness to just make myself more scared and it's working it's working uh if, if you're listening to this right now and you're like man that's not that scary okay press pause and then like go to a dark clo- <laughs> closet in your house lock yourself in a dark closet and then listen to it there by yourself and don't close your eyes and then just keep keep your eyes so you can look around and stuff and then see if it's scary i, I promise you it has to be that, ha- that that would have to scare you. All right. If that doesn't scare you much respect, much respect. If you can, if you're just, you know, you got nerves of steel, I guess. Okay. Back to this story. At times it was merely uncomfortable, but others, it gave you the impression that it wanted to hurt you, that the darkness hated you. And at times like that, I would run as though I were being chased back into the company of others. This only happened at night when I would be riding my bike home alone from a friend's house or when I was walking my dog and he would start growling at nothing or when I would walk into my dark room and would feel a horrible malevolence until I turned the lights on. Sometimes I would stare at the ceiling and only moonlight would be streaming in through my blinds and it seemed as though the room would get darker and darker slowly and the sense of being watched would increase and I would start seeing shapes moving at the corners of my eyes. I knew these events were strange because not all darkness or shadows give the impression of harboring unseen watchers. Most nights, nothing at all would be out of the ordinary. I didn't encounter a full shadow again until I was 15 and had moved into a new house, this time with my dad. I was sitting in the living room at 10 a.m., broad daylight outside, and then I felt like something was wrong. That feeling of being watched, and I had something smack hard against the window, which had the curtain drawn. My heart froze as I saw what made the sound a man, or rather the outline of a man about five foot tall, was pressed against the glass. Arms stretched out and bent upwards at the elbows, palms pressed flat against the glass. The man had no features, no clothes, just the generic human outline I remember from the bedroom. This took all of one second, as the shadow then turned and streaked away very fast. The thing that bothered me about it the most was that whatever it was pressed right against the window, and it should have been solid, but it had been almost transparent, with only the curtains catching the pale grayness of its outline. I had felt definite malice this time, and it only got worse. I saw a shadow at night walking my dog. He barked and bared his teeth. I felt the sensation again, and he looked quickly to the side and saw a shadow shape duck behind a boat in a neighbor's driveway. And then when I went to look, there was nothing there. I saw it again when I was in my kitchen getting some food. There were no other lights on in the living room and hall were nearly pitch black except for a tiny nightlight. 
And from that, I felt the watching feeling and turned fast to notice a man's head with no ears and red eyes looking around the corner from the hallway. It shrank back when I noticed. The worst was when I had fallen asleep doing homework and had a disturbing nightmare. Awakening to the sound of a shadow standing over my bed, outlined by the light coming in from the hallway through my half of the open bedroom. God damn it, I have to fucking turn on a light. I'm freaking myself out. Oh. Which then quickly backed away and then turned into dark motes when, it's, when I saw, when it saw I had noticed it. Oh, just like usual. The entire time I lived in that house, dark places almost always seemed to radiate anger and a sense of being watched. My dog always shied away from the dark corners and would bark and growl at nothing. The worst dreams I ever had came when I lived there and I know it had something to do with the shadows that didn't want to be seen, but would always let you catch them looking at you. Two more minor incidents were when I was walking down the stairs at midnight, the bottom floor being pitch black, I saw a shape with red eyes that looked wide and flowing. I think it was supposed to be glowing. Uh, with a bald human head and no... Oh, fuck that. Why does that make it so scary? Why, why did the bald human head just really freak me out? And no arms and legs. Ugh. Radiating no malice, just surprise. And then a month later, when I stepped outside my bedroom, I saw a hulking shadow whose head brushed the ceiling that had no eyes and a shape that was human, but for the strange, that was not human. Wait, a shape that was human, but for the strange jagged outline. I don't know what he's trying to say there. It stood in my way and even reached out. And then it turned and vanished down the wall into deeper shadows. It hadn't seemed evil either. I still see dark shapes out of the corner of my eye quite often, and occasionally the sense that a dim room is getting darker towards the ceiling, but the sense of being watched isn't quite as frequent as it was. I'm 23 now, and they must have gotten more careful because they don't let me see them fully anymore. Although I do catch them disappearing around corners or other objects. I've had two friends who didn't know about these incidents see shadow men once as well, and my friend's mother and grandmother said they saw a shadow man with narrow white eyes walk into their house look at them, and then turn and walk away. It's vindicating to know that I wasn't imagining it, and I often dwell upon it to remind me that not, not all in this world is as it seems. My mom still hates talking about it to this day. <laughs> okay, so that's story number one. Either, either this person is a complete and total wackadoodle, or they are living uh, an absolute fucking nightmare of a life full of red-eyed and white-eyed uh, and no-eyed menacing shadow figures always watching them. Jesus Christ, for the sake of our sleep tonight, let's hope that they're crazy. Because uh, if these kind of stories, like these, these stories freak me out because we just did all the science. But it's like, you know, this isn't about sleep paralysis. Not, not in every example that he's talked about. Some parts of the story, okay, you can write off a sleep paralysis. But when he's out, like fucking riding his bike and stuff, he's very awake. You know, if you're truly seeing something there. Oh, God. Okay. Second story. From name withheld by request again. Subject, eyewitness account of a shadow person. Or, or, I'm sorry, eyewitness account of shadow being phenomena. I am more than a little skeptical of ghosts and the paranormal, but about 17 years ago, I had an experience with a house that my father and I moved into in 1986. A few years ago, I started noticing stories about shadow people and realized that some other people have had similar experiences. I would like to share this experience with anyone who can relate to it. You have my full permission to use this account in your website. Please exclude my name and email address. Okay, so that already happened. This experience involved what I can only describe as shadow beans. When I first moved in, I thought I saw one of the neighborhood children running into the house and down the hall. When I went to look for him, there was no one there. All of the doors were closed, and there was no way out of the house in that direction. I didn't think anything of this at that time. At the, I didn't think anything of this at the time. What the? Why would you think anything of this? Oh, I would think a lot of that at the time. If I went into a house, if I went into fucking my house and some fucking weird kid, I see some kid run down the hall and I go up there and then the hall doesn't lead to anywhere that could lead back outside and I can't find the kid. I'm not going to be like, nah, well, whatever. That was weird. I'm going to go grab a sandwich now. <laughs> no, I'd be like, ah, we got to, we got to fucking figure out how to sell this house immediately. I know we just closed on it two days ago. We got to get back out of this house. That's terrifying. Okay. As time passed, I began seeing something in my peripheral vision just outside of my direct view. But when I would turn to look at it, there would be nothing there. I always assumed that a car had driven down the road and was just casting an odd shadow. Then, during the winter of 1987, something odd began happening. Very late at night, the television in the empty living room would turn on with the volume turned all the way up to a channel with empty static. The first time it happened, I opened the door to turn the television off. 
When I did this, I thought I heard unintelligible chattering and footsteps. Footsteps. This frightened me, so I left the television on and bolted back in my room. This only happened a few times over a period of three years. Well, ha, few times too many. God, I just got the chills when I read the thing about unintelligible chattering and footsteps in the middle of the night. Fuck that. Any of this stuff, would I would lose my mind. Oh, man, I've never... I, Earlier, I talked about having an experience of sleep paralysis. I have never, I, yeah, I've thought I've seen maybe some weird shadow things, like vaguely, vaguely out of the corner of my eyes and then like looked and then there was nothing ever. Nothing this intense ever. Thank God. Okay. Back into this person's story. Winter 1987. The first unmistakable encounter with a shadow being was sometime in late 1987. My door would mysteriously come ajar during the middle of the night and I would have to get up and close it. This happened dozens of times. Then one night when I went to get up to close it, I saw a tall shadow with a fedora hat standing on the other side of the door. It was blacker than the darkness around it, featureless and was staring right at me. Terrified and feeling I had no place to run, I picked up a screwdriver and lunged at the figure. As I did this, it slipped into the wall to the right of me within a split second. It made no sound, went through a solid wall. I was so frightened I thought I was going to die. After this, I slept with kitchen knives hidden under my bed and put a 30-pound stack of encyclopedias in front of the door at night to keep the door from opening. (laughs) I would totally do something like that. In the few instances where I heard the television turn itself on in the middle of the night, I let my father handle it. My father never once accused me of turning the television set on, which I thought odd. He did ask me if I heard the television set come on in the middle of the night also to to reassure himself that he wasn't the only one who had seen it. A few times, I also remember hearing my dad down the hall apparently telling... Uh, what he thought was me, that it was too late at night and that he had to get to work in the morning. I got the distinct impression that after this happened a few times, he realized that it wasn't me. He began sleeping in the den in 1989 rather than his own room, which happened to be right near the area where the shadows usually appeared. Other than hearing knocking on the wall between my room and the kitchen and occasionally having objects on shelves start shaking and sometimes being knocked off for what seemed like no reason, the disturbances stopped for a while. I, oh my God, I got the chills again. Just thinking about that. If I was that kid. Okay. Second encounter, spring 1988. Uh, I had the second encounter. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and seeing a shadow try to move through the door. It sort of looked like an amorphous blob of smoke. At first I thought it was the neighbor's cockatiel. <laughs> so I love that. It's a random conclusion that it escaped from its cage. But then I realized that it was black, violently grasping, uh, that it was a black, violently grasping skeletal hand. When I raised up out of bed, the rest of the figure began coming through the door. I knocked on the wall and screamed for my father to come. He ran down the hall, the hand, arm, and the rest of the figure yanked itself out the door and the figure flew away. My father flung the door open. I told him I had seen something, but I couldn't describe it. We went looking around the house to find some kind of animal because we had both seen something, quote unquote. Oh, man, skeleton hand made out of black smoke. Uh, I might just throw myself out of a window if I saw that. <laughs> just, rather than have to live with that memory. My God. Winter 1988, third encounter. Uh, I became deathly ill with pneumonia. At this time, I remember getting up in the middle of the night to go down to the hall to use the bathroom and seeing hanging upside down from the ceiling what looked like the upper torso of a pitch black skeleton with an unusually large head waving its arms. I will never forget this image. That part's in all caps. Again, this figure was darker than the darkness around it. I turned the hall light on and slipped it. And Oh, I turned the hall light on and it slipped up into the ceiling in a split second. I also remember at least two times in the three years I lived in the house seeing a small figure about three feet in height with a hood on. It was always toward the back of the hall where my father's room is, where I'd seen the figure of a child when I first first moved into the house. As soon as I made eye contact with it, it would recede into the darkness by floating backward. In 1989, my father and I moved out of the house. Since that time, I believe it has been torn down. I have never experienced anything like this since that time. I can't explain these experiences. I don't believe in ghosts and do not exclude the possibility that the house may have been built in an area with naturally strong or erratic electromagnetic field that makes people hallucinate or that I just happen to have a very vivid, or that I had ha- happen to have very vivid waking dreams while living in the house. All I know is that you couldn't pay me enough to go back to that place. Note, there were a few facts that might help make this story more credible. Other people had seen shadow-like figures in and around that house and described them to me without me telling them about my own experiences. Animals like the neighbor's dogs and cats would not set foot onto the property, 
I often saw the neighbor's dog growl at the front window at the house, but she would never go near it. At least a couple times I came home from riding my bike to see a friend knocking on my door, asking to be let in as though he were convinced I was inside. When I told him there was no one home, he said he had seen someone in the house and thought it was me. When he realized it wasn't me in the house, he turned sheet white. Fuck, <laughs> I got the chills uh, thinking about that. I don't even know where this house is. The only advice I can offer anyone about a problem like this is that whatever it is, it just seems to be tied to a specific location. If you're seeing this sort of thing, just move. It only gets worse. Fuck. Wow, man. Whew. Whew. Well, there you go. Either that happened or it didn't. I, I love uh, how people grab knives to protect themselves from the paranormal. As if you could stab something that doesn't have an actual body. However, uh, I would probably do the same thing. I think it just feels better when you're scared uh, to have a weapon. I wish I had a knife right now. I wish I had a knife for uh, a bat. I wish I had a bat right now. Oh, I'm, I'm, I may have to wuss out here soon and just turn on the light, but I'm going to try and power through the rest of these stories. And now, and now some stories uh, that we're going to you know, close on these stories for the scary part. Uh, these are ones about the hat man, also known as the top hat demon. There's a website called demonicpedia.com that defines this creature as the hat man is a shadow person or demon, depending on your source, that has been reported all over the world. The entity is usually described as a tall shadow man dressed in a long black trench coat and wearing a wide-brimmed hat or a fedora. He is distinctively male, and witnesses say that he has no face or a shadowy blurred face. Most shadow entities are usually seen for a moment or two before disappearing, but the hat man seems to be different, often staying for a prolonged period of time, and sometimes he even touches, chokes, or assaults his victims. Great. Uh, another aspect of the hat man that is eerie and more sinister than other shadow people is that the hat man is often associated with hostile environments, aggression, and is sometimes an indicator that something evil will happen. Okay, so basically he's an especially unpleasant shadow person, and most of them are very unpleasant. So he's he's the most unpleasant out of the unpleasant things we're talking about. Okay. Following stories are taken from the hatmanproject.com. A uh, message board described by its creator with the following paragraph. My name is Tim Brown. I am the site owner, administrator, and researcher for the Hat Man Project. The purpose of this site is to research the phenomena that has come to be known as the Hat Man. Reports of the Hat Man and other shadow beings have been on the rise within the last 10, 15 years. It was due to my own experience and my awareness of other people's sightings of the Hat Man that I decided to begin this research project. The aim of this website is to explore the stories of many sightings that have been reported. This is the very first and only website solely devoted to researching collecting and archiving information and stories related to the hat man as more stories are researched and collected they will be posted on this site regularly here we go let's see what tim has to offer february 14 2016 an entry titled he looked blacker than the night i could feel the evil i was 23 when i saw what i think experienced what people call the hat man Sorry, some of these sentences are going to be rough because I'm just reading what they wrote. It was by far the most terrifying experience of my life. First, let me say it was early morning and still dark. My mother and I are both nurses, so working day shifts, we left early for work before daylight. I was staying with my mom to save up money, single mom worries. My mother would drop my five-year-old son off to daycare for me because it was on her way to work. We lived on five acres with large lights on wooden poles throughout the property that turned on by a timer. It gave a sense of protection because it could get really dark. And I can testify to that, man. If, you, if you've if you never really spent, for whatever reason, time out in the country, you don't know how dark the world can get. Uh, I remember when I brought my uh, wife, Lindsay, out to, to Idaho where I grew up for the first time. That was one of the things that st stuck out to her was just at night how dark it is. When, it, when you're not near any urban center, you're near no street lights. It is just a special kind of darkness that you do not experience uh, living in the city or living in, you know, in a really big town because of there's always light bouncing up into the sky from, you know, in the area that you're in. But once you get way out in the country and you turn off all the lights in the house and there's just no light for literally miles and miles and miles, very dark, very dark. So I understand, uh, putting on, uh, putting on some lights around the property just to, just to make yourself feel better. Okay. And then she goes, this illusion was dispelled instantly this morning. Walking to our vehicles, I noticed a man standing under one of the lights closest to the house. I couldn't see his clothes per se, but their outlines. He didn't have a trench coat. It looked to be mid 
thigh Victorian era coat tapered. He had on boots from what the outline suggested, a stove hat, and he was looking at a watch on a chain. He didn't cast a shadow of his own. He was black as night. It's amazing the things that go through your head when something like this is happening. I could feel the evil coming off him in waves. It was almost like my adrenaline was about to make my heart explode. I was so terrified, I actually felt my eyes dilate. I began screaming at my mother to put my son in the car. Just go. Go right the fuck now. Not my usual vocabulary. Plus, they couldn't see or feel what I was feeling. My mother kept yelling, what's wrong? What's wrong? I walked back to the car and put my son in the seat and literally forced my mom into leaving without me. All the while, it's watching. I can't see it smiling, but I can, if that makes sense. It made me sick to my stomach. We had a 500-foot-long driveway that led to a dirt road, very isolated. I didn't get in my car and follow my mother and son until they were at the end. I had to make sure it wouldn't follow them. I just looked straight at it, my heart running to 10K, and I'm standing still. I left finally to find my mother waiting for me at the end of the dirt road to the highway. Bewildered, I made her leave and called her from my cell to explain why I had acted like a crazy person. Strangely, she believed me. I don't think... It was used to my reaction. I had to protect my family, even though I knew it was there for me. I don't know how I knew this. I just did. I hope to never feel that type of intense fear again, ever. I've met my quota in spades. Ugh, God, seeing a demon after you wake up in the morning? Damn it, that that just doesn't seem fair. Like, once you make it to the middle of the night, creepy stuff is supposed to fade away, right? Like, you made it. You made it through the night. you, You get a break during the day. Seeing a demon after you wake up for work is like outrunning a mugger and then making it into your house, and then locking the door behind you, only to have another mugger just right there in your face. Like someone else has broken into your house, and then that person beats you up and takes your money. It's like, come on, man, I just fucking, I just outran someone else trying to take my money and slap me around. And then I got home, and then you fucking slap me around and take my money. That's not cool. That's not, that's not fair. All right, here's another story. This is an, is an entry titled, I Have Never Felt Fear Like This, from December 13th, 2015. The first time I saw, uh, seen this figure, I was about 16. I was lying in bed and couldn't sleep. From where my bed was positioned, I could see down the hallway. I seen him standing down the hallway outside my brother's room. He was facing my brother's bedroom door, so I was looking at a side profile. He was tall, wearing a long trench coat and a fedora-like hat. He had no distinguishable features. It was dark as the hallway light. It was dark as the hallway light was on Yet, I still couldn't see any features like mouth or eyes. I was frozen with fear, and after a minute or so, he just walked into my brother's room and out of view. I lay terrified, waiting for something to happen because I knew it was something more realistic than a ghost. After about 15 minutes of lying terrified, (laughs) I love little kid stuff. I love like 15 minutes. That does just crack me up where like you see this, the most fearful entity you've ever seen go, go into your brother's room. And then you're like, I'm just going to fucking stay here and just be quiet. As opposed to like, I should go help my brother. (laughs) It's like, ah, thank God it's him, not me. Thank God it's him, not me. Uh, After 50 minutes of lying terrified, I got the courage to go wake my parents. Their bedroom was just past my brother. So as I was passing, I looked around the room as quickly as I could. My brother was still sound asleep and no... Uh, tall man in sight. My my dad searched the house, making sure I hadn't seen the. Um, I doubt he told his dad <laughs> that it was fifteen minutes passed by. He's like, Dad, I just I just saw it going to the room right now. I just saw it like five seconds ago. Five seconds ago, something went into Timmy's room. And that's I ran in, I ran to get you as soon as I saw it. <laughs> as opposed to fifteen minutes ago, I saw what may have been a dangerous stranger walk into my brother's room, walk into your son's room. Okay, four months later. I seen the exact same thing. He was standing in the same place and walked away in the same way. Then until one night, he was standing at the foot of my bed. He wasn't looking at me, but looking down towards the floor. Frozen with fear, I shouted for my parents as loud as I could in that moment, and again, he just slowly walked out of view. My parents again thought nothing of it. One night, I woke up to the feeling of someone sitting down on the end of my bed over in the corner there. He was. I wasn't sleeping because he had made me feel terrified, but then I started seeing him in broad daylight. For example, I was in the kitchen making a sandwich, and from the side of my eye, I seen somebody walking across the hallway. I wasn't expecting anyone to be home, so when I focused and realized it was him, I had never felt fear like that. I kept watching him, and he just walked into the living room out of sight. I was so terrified, I locked myself in the kitchen with my dog and a knife. I'm not one to believe in ghosts, etc., but this is too real. I'm 20 now, and even thinking about him terrifies me. Again, man, not cool, top hat demon. Once we make it to daylight, you're supposed to leave us alone, Right? And if you know, why, don't come at us at the daylight when we're making a tasty sandwich. It's a dick move. All right. One last story. 
a quick entry into the Hatman Project from March 19th, 2012 from Kelly Merriman. And Kelly says, My experience with the Hat Man, the incident occurred around this time last year, in the early hours of the morning. I was in bed asleep next to my boyfriend when I suddenly woke up. Oh man, this one's, I, I'm remembering this one, uh, reading it before now, <laughs> as I'm doing this. Oh God. I was paralyzed and had the overwhelming feeling of fear. I was lying on my back when I saw the figure. It felt like pure evil and had the aura of a male. He was wearing what looked like a long dust. Jesus Christ, I just heard a car drive by and it fucking scared the shit out of me. Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to try. This is the scariest part. I'm still in the dark. I'm not going to turn on the lights. I'm not going to wuss out. I don't know why. I'm way too old for this stuff. Freak me out like it is. But I feel like a scared little kid right now. Okay. Man, that's, that car scared the shit out of me when it drove by. Whew. Okay. Okay, that's another car. All right, sorry. I know you guys can't hear it. This is probably really annoying. I'm going to focus. All right. So I was in bed at sleep next to my boyfriend. When I suddenly woke up, I was paralyzed and had the overwhelming feeling of fear. I was lying on my back when I saw the figure. It felt like pure evil and had the aura of a male. He was wearing what looked like a long duster jacket with a collar turned up. Old-fashioned fedora-style hat with wild, bushy hair flowing from under it. The whole figure was like solid black, and he was standing sideways at the end of the bed facing me. Then he disappeared, and it felt like something was trying to crawl up my legs, as if it was trying to get to my face. I managed to move my hand a little, and, it, and I touched it. It was hands with really long fingers and nails. It was like it was trying to claw its way up to me. At this point, I tried with all my might to move and managed to lightly tap my boyfriend on the back. He turned around and looked at me for a second and turned back. A few seconds later, I was no longer paralyzed and quickly woke my boyfriend up. I screamed at him that something was crawling up my legs. He lifted the covers and it stopped. I was petrified. After this, when I was talking about it with my boyfriend, he said when he lifted the covers, he caught a glimpse of a hand at my ankle, then it disappeared at the end of the bed. I never slept in that bedroom again. I ended up sleeping in the living room. I moved out of that house five months later. Fuck, hell yes, you moved out of that house. Holy shit. Oh, man, if this is true, that's the scariest story of the bunch to me because A, Kelly didn't just claim to see something. She claimed to feel something, touch her. B, she claimed to touch it as well. C, the visual description fucking just creeps me out. And D, making it far away scarier than the other stories, if true, is that her boyfriend claims to have seen the hand at her ankle also and that this thing disappeared. Two people seeing the same creepy thing. Oh, man, if that happened to me. Uh, I don't know how I'd mentally handle that. I really don't. My first thought was I, I, I couldn't sleep in that bed again, but then I thought, well, who's to say it's associated anyway with the bed or the room? You know, what if it's after me and it doesn't matter where I go, damn it. You know, it'd be a little hard to sleep after that. Ah, oh, it's going to be hard for me to sleep tonight. This, that's enough of today's super scary stuff. Super scary stuff. Okay, before I share any brief final thoughts on the shadow people, let's get completely away from scary. Let's lighten things up a bit. Let's check in with people we know are making up stories about shadow people. People who are, for sure, idiots of the internet. Idiots of the internet. 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 Alright, the first comment uh, this episode comes from underneath the YouTube video of the Art Bell Coast to Coast Shadow People uh, episode I was talking about earlier. User Crucial13, YouTube user Crucial13 states, Tell people the devil is anti-nature, anti-organic. That is why being healthy is an aspect in this spiritual war. This is the first comment underneath a video about shadow people. What a strange angle to take uh, on why they're around. I'll tell you why we're suddenly seeing all these shadow people. Too much chemical fertilizer out there. <laughs> oh yeah, pesticides, herbicides. They don't discuss cancer, my friend. They increase the strength of the Dark Lord and his shadow minions. Wake up. Less organic produce at the grocery store, more demons in your bedroom. How do you not see that? You want to fight the devil? Grow some vegetables at home. Or grow some beets. Grow some radishes. Don't use anything to do it other than filtered water and homemade compost. Me, personally, I shit directly in my garden. I make my own compost. I don't trust the store-bought compost because who knows what the animals ate before they shit on the stuff that was supposed to make the compost. Wait, what? How did a video about shadow people inspire you to talk about organic produce? And then the first reply under this comment is even weirder. User Brit O responds with, no doubt, you hit the nail on the head. When I try to tell my family 
and whoever else, what and who is working against Yahweh and his people, they are like, why would they want to destroy us and destroy our land? They don't understand. They hate Yahweh creations. These serpents want to run us down. We all need to grow the healer of the nation's herb, uh, Kwane Bosom. It heals the land and the people. Since our silicon trees were wiped out, we are very short on oxygen. Why we don't live 300 to 500 years anymore? <laughs> YouTube, there are no forests. Oh, YouTube, there are no forests on flat earth. Wake up. So I guess, you know, YouTube that video. Yahweh bless you. Fight the dark with light. Peace from a dusty desert town in California. Wow, that was so much crazy. The silicon trees reference is from an unbelievably idiotic YouTube video for some Russian dude called There Are No Forests on Flat Earth, Wake Up. Uh, it's utter lunacy, and I think I talked about it in a previous episode. Th this Russian guy thinks that the whole earth, uh, which is flat, this whole flat earth, was covered with giant trees, uh, kind of like tree-like forms, during what he calls uh, the silicon tree era. And then the trees were, they were six to a hundred kilometers tall, and each were so huge that after the flood and nuclear blasts, uh, nuclear blasts, I know I get, I still get shit about my nuclear pronunciation, uh, huge dump nowadays are mistaken for hills, mountains, it's just fucking gibberish, it's gibberish. And, and user Brit O has apparently watched this video and accepted the convoluted ramblings of a maniac as undisputed truth. I googled, uh, Kwane Bosom, and it's an alleged biblical allusion to marijuana, uh, I'm guessing on Kwane, it's, it's Q-A-N-E-H. So basically, user Brito took user Crucial 13's produce angle and pushed it in a pro-weed direction. You know, just, yeah, bro, totally, totally. Organic uh, produce, it fights the devil and his shadow minions. 100%, bro, 100%. You hit the nail on the head, bro. Great work. And what is the best kind of produce for fighting evil? It's weed. It's weed, bro. And if we had more weed and we had more trees, not only would, would there be less shadow people, we'd be like 500 years old again. As if that was a thing. Both these stupid assholes uh, clearly have like this pre-programmed agenda that they just shoehorn into every subject they talk about, you know? Just one of those people. Yeah, bro. That was a good baseball game last night, man. Totally, totally. You know, we'd have a lot more good baseball games if there were more trees on Earth and we could smoke more, you know, more weed all the time and live to 500 years old again. Think about how many more home runs someone could hit if their career, you know, lasted until they were like 300, 400 years old like it, like it used to, you know, bro? Man, this is a good steak. It's a good steak, man. Yeah, bro, it's so good. It, it would, you know, it would taste even better if the chef had like three or four hundred years to hone their craft like they used to. But no, yeah, idiots. Let's see what let's see what other comment gold is in this thread. User Grant Redman cracked me the hell up when I read this comment. How do I keep the shadow people from using my room as a dimension? <laughs> How do I keep the shadow people from using my room as a dimensional jackoff booth? I'm freaking sick of the shady buttholes jacking it all day and night all over my things. That made me, that made me laugh so hard when I first saw that. Uh, made me laugh now. You know, like he's haunted by the shadow of Chikatilo, the Ukrainian butcher of Rostov. Just, do not mind me in the corner. I shadow now. I cannot come on stuff. I only shadow come. It, 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 while it clean off much easier. It wipe off easier. Shadow come like dust. Please, just let me jerk soft cursed penis in the room corner. I bother no one now. Love it, man. He's obviously joking, clearly joking, but sweet, but dumb as a rock YouTuber. Uh, Leonila Lucatero doesn't understand that he's joking and offers advice on how to get rid of this troublesome shadow jerker. Like, you can tell this person seriously think, thinks that someone, some demon is jerking off in someone's room and they're going to help him. And she says, prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Hope you look for him too. Your gift came from God. You opened the door for them, so the only way to get rid of is in Jesus' name. Your you word have power. Fear within you will keep the close to you. So with authority and God's power, make them leave. Oh, Leonila, you mean well. You do. I know you do. And if you love the Bible, good for you, truly. But you may also want to read some other books. Uh, maybe something of a satirical, or at least a sarcastic bent. Some humor essays. You know, you clearly uh, never properly learned how to joke around. Taking this way too seriously. Just, what? There's a demon masturbating in your room? D Dios mio, this is terrible. You must pray. You cannot continue to endure this perversion. You don't have to helplessly watch him sinfully pleasure himself and literally spread his demon seed all over your precious belongings. Pray to God, ask the Lord, dear Heavenly Father, please rid my room of this jerking shadow. Please make him put his shadow dick back in his shadow pants. 
And then Andre's, you know, Chikatilo shadow would interrupt his prayer. Just, what is, what is big deal? I harm no one with shadow jerk. I not even have offensive hard shadow cock. It is limp, non-threatening shadow penis. I, I tug around for fun in dark corner of room. You barely, you barely see me. You just go back to sleep. And then finally, under a separate video titled Shadow People Caught on Camera, Terrifying Footage, user uh, <laughs> Tarrant won the internet for me with a comment that made me laugh loudly while sitting by myself in a Starbucks uh, to the point I definitely got some weird concerned glances thrown my way. <laughs> Writing, would a shadow person be offended if I align my own shadow with it and pretend butt fucking it? <laughs> so good. Oh, that's so good to me. I just picture sneaking up on a shadow person. You know, you get your own shadow right behind its shadow. Like, it's all trying to be scary. And then you sneak your shadow behind its shadow. And then you start thrusting your hips back and forth really fast. Right? It's so stupid. So juvenile. So funny. Oh, man. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Terrence, for making me laugh after sifting through so many comments that made me want to cry on today's Idiots of the Internet. Idiots of the Internet. All right. That was a fun little break from today's terror. I, ho I hope you did get scared today. Uh, if you didn't, I hope you had fun uh, learning about something strange, unusual. Uh, what do I think about shadow people after all this? You know, the scientific explanation of sleep paralysis and brain malfunction does make sense to me, actually. Uh, I, I do think that's probably what it is. I, I really do. However, uh, if I saw some shadowy humanoid shape uh, sitting on my dresser room at, you know, my room at night, I, I don't think science would be all that comforting. You know, right now, <laughs> dark room, I, I am pretty sketched out. Oh, man, with the paranormal, man, it, it's easy to, to ride it off during the daylight, but uh, much harder to do so at night. And you also can't ever completely prove it's not real any more than you can, you know, prove that God doesn't exist or religion isn't real. It, it is a matter of faith in the end. It comes down to, you know, do you believe in the possibility of things that science can't, you know, scientifically explain or not? It's a personal choice. Me personally, I must believe a tiny bit in the paranormal because right now, again, man, in the dark, a uh, little scared to say I don't believe. I'm afraid of what might show up to change my mind. <laughs> like not crazy, crazy scared, but enough, enough scared to not want to tempt the shadow people. Uh, and, and speaking of shadow people, let's take a, a few more looks back at them with some top five takeaways. Time suck. Top five takeaways. Number one, shadow people, if they are around at all, have always been around, with versions showing up in ancient Egyptian, Roman, Greek, African, Arabian, and other cultures. Number two, studies have proven that an electrical stimulation given to the temporoparietal junction can create the illusion of a shadow person. This combined with hallucinations brought on by sleep paralysis is the most widely accepted scientific reason for shadow people sightings. Our minds are playing tricks on us. And in a way, to me, uh, the fact that our minds can create the hallucination of some sketchy shadow dude is almost as scary as an actual shadow dude. Number three, there could be shadow galaxies, shadow stars, and even shadow people. That is not a quote attributed to YouTuber Brit O. That's Stephen Hawking. Maybe the shadow world really is always around us. Number four, if you do see a shadow person, you're best off seeing one that doesn't have eyes. I know no eyes is scary, but the only other option is red eyes, and that apparently is demonic. So, you know, I uh, hope to see a monster rather than a demon, I guess. Number five, new info. There have been at least two Shadow People movies, 2013 Shadow People and 2017's The Shadow People. Ain't It Cool News favorably reviewed the 2013 movie, saying, It made me think twice about turning on the light as I went to bed. Any film that does that is a winner in my book. 2017's The Shadow People hasn't seemed to receive any critical reviews of note. A mention this podcast is the most press this film has received so far. But if you want to watch it, uh, you can rent on Amazon for 99 cents. And it does have 3.4 out of 5 rating. Not bad. So if you still haven't gotten your Shadow People fix, knock yourself out. Time suck. Top 5 takeaways. So that was a shout out people time suck, man. I hope, hope it left you with a little more knowledge than you had when you started listening. Uh, special thanks to time suckers, JJ, Austin Jones, Stephanie De Silva, Amber, Jeff Patik, and I'm sure many others I have missed uh, for suggesting this week's topic. Excited to suck on the bonus topic, the Zodiac Killer this Friday uh, between December 1968 and October 1969. 
someone referring to themselves as the Zodiac in a letter written to the San Francisco Examiner uh, is believed by law enforcement to have killed at least five victims and injured two others. The killer has claimed 37 total victims, and they've never been caught. Someone taunted Central California authorities in the late 60s in the early 70s, sending in clues to their identity, writing letters to the press, claiming victims, and making new threats until at least 1974. A horde of suspects have been investigated since the initial murders, but no one has ever been charged with the crimes. Who did it? And all these years later, are they still even out there? Are they still killing? Are they dead? Are they sitting in a prison cell? You know, convicted of other crimes? The whole case, it's going to get broken down on Friday, suck. Eager to learn about a mystery I would have never taken the time to investigate without this podcast. Big thanks to Time Suck editor Jesse Dobner for eliminating a lot of mistakes I would have received emails for uh, with today's episode. If you have any professional editing needs, man, hit him up. Uh, Jesse Dobner at Outlook.com. That's J-E-S-S-E-D-O-B-N-E-R at Outlook.com. Uh, and as always, thanks to Time Suck Social Media Organizer, uh, organizer Sydney Shives, for helping me uh, with the posts, social media posts, organizing emails, uh, much more. And uh, and also, you know, today's episode, Stephanie De Silva, for for helping uh, with the initial research and pointing me in a lot of good directions and getting me excited for uh, for this topic. Yeah, big thanks to Stephanie, a member of the uh, Bojangles research team. Thanks to all of you who follow the show on social media at Time Suck Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. It means so much that you take the time to do that. Uh, social media now has an awesome new look. Thanks to Danger Brain. Still, still need to get, I think, the Instagram one updated and a few others. It's all coming together, though, with Danger Brain. And if you need a graphic design uh, work, logo, illustration work, go to thedangerbrain.com. Work with some super cool, super talented dudes. And I appreciate the recent PayPal donations. Uh, so generous. Uh, very grateful for that helps out this independently produced podcast very much. And, uh, and I appreciate those of you who have chosen to, uh, use the Amazon link at timesuckpodcast.com to do your Amazon shopping and help the show. And, you know, and, uh, and thanks for buying those shirts, you know, hats, albums, and books off timesuckpodcast.com in the shop. Finally working on some, uh, some new merch ideas right now. Uh, figuring that out. Got to figure out which exotic endangered animals fur slash skin slash genitals I'm going to need to give you a quality soft product. All right, let's catch up on some previous episodes and recent happenings with some Time Sucker updates. Updates? Get your Time Sucker updates. A couple of pronunciation mistakes with last week's Bermuda episode, Bermuda Triangle. My battle with the English language continues. I feel especially mushed mouthed today. Uh, yeah, I got a little cold or something. Uh, the debate over whether or not I speak any language fluently rages on. Uh, time Sucker uh, Noah Wooten wrote in with the subject line, Holy sheet, Dan, you speaketh so batterest. <laughs> and then he said, Hey, Dan, I was re- recently listening to you to your Bermuda Triangle episode, and I thought you might like to know that you mispronounced a word. <laughs> and then in uh, parentheses, like always. Yeah, that's fair. You pronounced irradiated with a rad, like I just did right now. It's supposed to be irradiated. Uh, you pronounced ira- irradiated with a rad, like bouncing the smoothies guy's head was so rad. It is actually pronounced irradiated with a raid, like Bojangles always enjoys raiding communist munition bunkers. I love the examples, Noah. I really do. I know this is probably only one of, the <laughs> of thousands of emails from grammar Nazis like me. Still thought uh, how I put it might make your day a little bit better. It did. Uh, hail Lucifina, and may she sink all the ships, Noah Wooten. Well, thank you, Noah. Uh, I know some of you think this stuff is a little nitpicky, but I need to know. You know, it's, I mean, ob- obviously, sometimes I just, sometimes, often, I flub words and then correct myself, but sometimes I clearly don't know how to pronounce words, and so I, I do like to have it pointed out to me so I speak a little more clearly going forward. All right, also a Scandinavian update. Uh, remember me needlessly and absurdly and just horrifically trashing the, uh, this geographical region? Well, I didn't even get the region right. Here I am making fun. <laughs> making fun of some region for being idiots in an absurd way that I didn't mean. And then ironically, I don't even have the region correct. So who's the idiot? Who's the really idiot? This guy speaking. Well, Nordic time sucker, Alexander, uh, Agard wrote in with the following greetings, grand Poobah of Sukkistan. He whose voice is the song of most revered Nimrod. That's beautiful. A short note in regards to your tangent about Scandinavia during the Bermuda Triangle episode. I realized that it wasn't really part of the greater story and is rather insignificant, but hear me out. 
You talked about Scandinavians and then mentioned Sweden, Norway, and Finland. The latter is where the issue lies. It is a rather common misconception that Finland is a part of Scandinavia, but it isn't. Scandinavia is a region of Northern Europe that shares cultural, historical, and linguistic roots. The countries that are part of it are Sweden, Norway, and Denmark in order of size, not importance. (laughs) No one likes Sweden. I'm sure that's a joke. Uh, Finland is connected to the former two by land. Yes, it even shares some cultural roots, but linguistically it has more in common with Estonia and Hungary. There is a way out, though. Another common term is the Nordics. This refers to the Scandinavian countries and to other countries often associated with Scandinavia, Iceland, and Finland. Iceland's reason for being considered part of Scandinavia is purely geographical, as it does share all of the required roots with the Scandinavian countries. Oh yeah, don't bother trying to pronounce my surname, and thanks for the many hours of entertainment and quite interesting topics. Keep on sucking. Cheers, Alexander. Well, thank you, Alexander. And I think I did pronounce your surname correctly because I found a YouTube video about Agard uh, jewelry. Same spelling, hopefully said the same way. Hail Nimrod, my Viking brother. And now I know, man, it's uh, Denmark. That's right, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. Not Sweden, Norway, and Finland. Okay, many of you wrote in uh, this this, uh, past week about the newly declassified JFK documents, including future research intern for Times Like Maddie Teeter, to let me know that Trump did not declassify all the documents. Damn it! Now, I know Trump, uh, you know, did, did declassify a lot of them, but not all of them, uh, which makes me really think something sketchy did go on. You know, back in that assassination attempt, makes me think the CIA really did have something to do with his assassination. Because if not, like, why would information still be that sensitive over fifty years later, when odds are anyone who actually did something super shady uh, is is dead? Like, why are we still hiding it? It had to be, I think, really bad. I don't know. I mean, maybe they're hiding it for reasons I just can't comprehend. And it's, it would, it would, I don't know, be some kind of security breach in some way for, I don't, it it doesn't fucking make sense to me that they're still hiding this so long after the fact. But some new information has been released, like a memo written uh, the day Oswald was killed, where FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover expressed concern about the spread of conspiracy theories, saying, The thing I'm concerned about is having something issued so that we can convince the public that Oswald is the real assassin. There's some interesting language there, so that we can convince the public that Oswald is the real assassin. Like, why are they feeling like they need to convince them? Uh, Some other memos uh, reveal the FBI had warned Dallas police of a death threat made against Oswald. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover said, We at once notified the chief of police, and he assured us Oswald would be given sufficient protection. However, this was not done. Uh, The documents also reveal the Soviets thought the assassination was an inside job. Uh, Another Hoover memo details information from a source within the USSR on the Soviet reaction to the Kennedy's death. Source said the news was met with great shock and consternation, and church bells were tolled in the memory of President Kennedy. The Soviets were shocked by the development and preferred Kennedy as the head of the U.S. government as they felt they had a mutual understanding with him. The Soviet Communist Party believed the assassination was an ultra-right act and, in effect, a coup. But nothing released yet answers any real questions. Hopefully the answers will come in a future Time Sucker update, man. Oh, man, that was uh, disappointing. We didn't get, we didn't get more there. Finally, one of the most heartwarming updates I've had in a while. This one comes in from from new time sucker, Danita Wines. She says, I'm loving the suck. I'm a fairly new listener and have been binge listening to your podcast. I'm a PhD candidate in psychology, planning on defending my dissertation soon. And my dissertation is on developing an effective intervention to reduce racism among college students. During my academic process, I've read a lot of articles and I've heard a lot of people talk about race relations in America. I have to say, your MLK Jr. podcast was so moving and thorough. I experienced a variety of emotions listening to the history you outlined. I was mad, then sad, then empowered and proud. It was a damn roller coaster I wasn't ready to experience. As a black female, you spoke to my experiences and my family's experiences. Thank you for this podcast. It's informative, educational, and relevant. <laughs> Keep fucking sucking. Ah, oh, I love that. <laughs> love hearing that, Danita. I, I needed to read your, your message today, too, while I feel like such a mush-mouthed idiot going through half of today's episode. So I appreciate that. You made an Idaho man uh, starting to get some gray in his beard feel pretty, you know, pretty damn good. Made me feel like, you know, maybe my body's getting a little older, but, but by staying curious, maybe my, uh, my mind's staying young. You know, I feel like that's how you keep it young, by, by, by keep, uh, you know, working it evolving. The older I get, you know, the sillier prejudice based on race or gender or sexual sexual orientation is to me. It's just such a, a 
truly such a waste of time, such a waste of energy, you know, so unnecessarily hurtful. I mean, there's that cliche of like, you know, if you weren't doing that, you could be curing cancer. But there is like truth to like, God, if we, if we weren't just so fucking busy tearing each other down, you know, for, for the most nonsensical reasons, because you, you happen to have more pigment or less than somebody else, we could be accomplishing uh, so much more. Thanks, time suckers. I needed that. We all did. All right, that's all for today, time suckers. I hope this uh, episode is entertaining. I, I definitely feel like when you get a cold, uh, your thoughts are a little cloudy. So I hope that uh, I was able to trust my notes <laughs> and put forth uh, a clear and fun episode. I hope it wasn't truly all over the place. And if it was truly all over the place, I hope it wasn't entertaining all over the place. And happy Halloween. Uh, you know, enjoy getting or receiving some candy, wearing some sexy outfits, or seeing others wear sexy outfits, or just wearing a fun outfit, or wearing something scary. Just have fun. Have fun, you nuts. You know, just be careful out there in the dark. And if it feels like something is watching you from the shadows, uh, just know that there is a chance something has watched you from the shadows. And take my advice, and don't look at it. Don't risk seeing some red eyes staring back at you, or a hat, or worst case scenario, uh, red eyes and a hat. And keep on sucking. Oh, shit.